So on the previous slides, we have been talking about uh, atoms, and sometimes we've been looking at atoms that have more than one electron. So as an example, this atom over here has two electrons. One of the things that I want you to realize is that any particular atom can have many electrons. So you could have an atom with many more than two electrons. So if an atom can have uh, many electrons, how are those electrons arranged inside of the atom? And we're going to talk about that in detail now. So how are these atoms arranged? Well, one way of thinking about how the atoms are arranged is you can think of the, the electrons as being arranged in shells in an atom. And I'm putting shells here in quotes because shells uh, is a little bit of an oversimplification, but it, it's good enough for our purposes. So I want you to realize that, that it's a simplification of reality, but it is still good enough for, for the level of discussion that we're going to have. So what do I mean by a shell? You can think of there being multiple shells in an atom. Here's the first shell, and this is the center of the atom. This is where the this is the nucleus, this is where the protons and the neutrons will sit, and the, the first shell, which is shown by this circle here, you can think of it as being the lowest energy shell. This shell can hold a maximum of two electrons, and I'm showing two small empty circles here. Each of those empty circles you can think of as being a slot that can hold one electron, and the first shell can hold a maximum of two. There is a second shell beyond the first shell, so the second shell is shown here, and this shell uh, can hold a maximum of eight electrons. So the first shell can hold a maximum of two, the second shell can hold a maximum of eight. There's a third shell beyond that, or you can think of there being a third shell. There really isn't a third shell, as I mentioned, but it, it's a reasonable way of thinking about how this works. And th the third shell can also hold eight electrons. And we're not going to talk about uh, more than that. So th there are, you can think of there, as there being shells beyond the third shell, but uh, for the purposes of this course, we're going to stick with the first three shells because most of the atoms that we deal with will only have electrons that go up to about the third shell. So here are three shells. The first one holds two electrons. The second and third each hold a maximum of eight. So imagine that you had an atom that had a single proton. If you remember from the discussions we've had in previous sections, you know that this is a hydrogen atom. And if it was just like this, if it was just a proton and no electrons, this atom here would have an electrical charge of positive one. However, let's pretend that our hydrogen atom was going to be electrically neutral. If it was going to be electrically neutral, it would need an electron to, to balance out or to neutralize the charge of this positively charged proton. So let's add an electron in, and now we've put an electron in our first shell, because our first shell had space to hold that electron. So the other general rule here is that electrons will fill in, um, if you have multiple electrons in an atom, the electrons will fill in the first shell first, then they will fill in the second shell. If there are no other spots, then they will begin to fill in the third shell. And th they essentially do this uh, one electron at a time. You can think of it working that way. So now we have a neutrally charged hydrogen atom because it has one proton and one electron. And the other idea here is that the first shell, the electrons in the first shell have the lowest energy. The electrons in the second shell have slightly higher energy, and the electrons in the third shell have even higher energy than that. And um, although we won't talk about electron energy right now, it will become important in a lab later on in this course. So we have our electrically neutral hydrogen atom here. Let's pretend that we have a different atom now. This atom has two protons. So if you look up the element that has two protons in the periodic table, you'll see that it's helium. In this case, we have two positively charged protons and one negatively charged electron. So this atom, again, has a charge of positive one because there are two positive charges and one negative. Let's pretend that we're going to make an electrically neutral helium atom. If we're going to make it electrically neutral, we need two electrons as well. And you can ask, where is that electron going to go? Well, if you follow the rule that I just described, that electron is going to go in the first shell as well. It's going to go in the last remaining slot in the first shell. So there it is. Now we have a, a neutrally charged helium atom. And you can continue to play this game um, as you make uh, different at 
different types of atoms. So if you have three protons in your nucleus, you have a lithium atom. If you wanted to make this lithium atom electrically neutral, then you would have to put in a third electron. And the third electron will only now fit in one of the slots in the second shell because the first two shells are already filled up with the previous two electrons. And so this atom is electric, an electrically neutral version of lithium. And you can continue on with this. I, I won't do this in too much detail, but if you added a fourth proton, then it would be a beryllium atom. And if you wanted to make it electrically neutral, you would have to add a fourth electron. And that fourth electron could fit into the second shell as well. And you could keep adding electrons if you wanted to. Um, until you completely filled up the second shell. And if you needed to add more electrons, then you would start filling in the third shell. So I'm just showing you uh, an example of that. So we're adding more protons, and we're trying to make them neutral, and we continue on making uh, that atom neutral. So th there are a few additional rules that I want to uh, go over with you about electrons and electron shells, um, and, and a few terms that I want to discuss. The first term is uh, sort of a definition. Uh, the term is valence shell. So the outermost electron shell for an atom, the outermost shell that has electrons in it, is called the valence shell. So if I have this atom over here, and it has a filled uh, first shell, so the first shell is completely occupied with as many electrons as it can hold, and then it has one, two, three, four, five electrons in the second shell, this second shell, the outermost shell, is called the valence shell of this atom. So that's something I want you to know. I want you to know what a valence shell is. Second thing is that the electrons that are sitting in the outermost shell are, hopefully not surprisingly, they are called valence electrons. So these five electrons in the outermost shell here are called valence electrons. Now here's a rule. And it it's, may seem to be a little bit of a silly rule, but it, it's a reasonable way of thinking about how atoms uh, work. The rule is that atoms don't like, and I put like in quotes because obviously atoms don't have feelings, but again, it's a reasonable way of thinking about this. Atoms don't like to have empty slots in their outermost shell. So here's the outermost shell, and this particular atom has three empty slots. So how does an atom deal with uh, this particular rule? One way of dealing with this is that you can think of an atom. An atom will either try to fill those empty slots by interacting with other electrons in other atoms. So, and we, we will talk about that in more detail. If that's a little bit confusing, we'll talk about that in more detail uh, later on. And sometimes they can even steal electrons. So if this particular atom does not prefer to have these three empty slots, it's conceivable that it could uh, steel, and again, steel is, is a little bit more of a human term, but you can think of this atom as acquiring three additional electrons to fill in the second shell. And you could think of this atom as preferring to uh, try to, to acquire those three electrons. So this atom does not like to be in this state where it has empty uh, slots in its, in its outermost shell, and it's going to try to do something about it. The other way <clears throat> that it can deal with this uh, type of situation is um, it can try to get rid of excess electrons in its outermost shell. So another way that this atom could conceivably deal with this problem of preferring not to have empty slots is to get rid of all five of these electrons. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And if it does that, then again, conceivably, it's in a more preferred state. You'll see, uh, we'll talk about this in more detail um, in the upcoming slides, but basically what I want you to realize is that atoms prefer not to have empty slots in their outermost shell, and they will try to do something about that to avoid that situation. 